Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be unboxing the brand new iPhone 14 Pro Max. So typically in years past, I have purchased the Pro models, just the standard model. Um, this is actually the first time I'm getting the, the Pro Max or the Plus version. I've never had one of these bigger phones before. Uh, so it'll be kind of a little different experience. We're also going to kind of take a look at uh, the phone compared to last year's iPhone 13 Pro. And now it's not the same. It's not the Pro Max, but it's the Pro version. This one's also the Pro. So by and large, they're pretty much the same thing, which is minor differences to the battery and the screen size and whatnot. So here we go. Here is the new box. Kind of cool. Uh, it shows up here with the new uh, the cutout, or what their Apple is calling it, the dynamic island. That's pretty cool. It's interesting, though, having a white box. Since for the iPhone 11 Pro, we got a black box. For the iPhone 12 Pro, we got a black box. As well as for the 13 Pro. So, I mean, they've uh, it's gotten smaller or whatever. But, yeah. And then now we're going to back to a white box. So it's kind of interesting, though. Having, I mean, we originally, you know, had these white iPhone boxes and they went to black to signify that it's a pro phone, but then it looks like they're going back to white. So kind of cool, but yeah, just got an interesting difference between the phones. On the back here, it tells us everything that is included with it. So the iPhone 14 Pro Max, USB-C to lightning cable, power adapter and headphones sold separately. Okay, it also says supports GCSM, UMTS, LTE and 5G, sub six gigahertz, millimeter wave, all these other things. Now this phone is, it, since it's you know a US phone, this phone has eSIM only, so it does not actually have a, a SIM card spot for it. So you can't swap out your SIM card or take it out of this phone, put it in another phone, whatever else. I um, mean, even says right there, requires wireless plan, eSIM. So, you know, interesting. But here we go. Let's go ahead and take a look at the phone itself. I, I, ooh, I'm not even going to spoil it just yet. I'll let you guys see. All right, here we go. Here is the brand new phone. Whoop. There we go. That's the inside of the box. Little cutout there for the camera. Woo! Look at that. So I got uh, the new purple color. It's actually kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I've, I've gotten these cool colors before in years past. Like uh, on my iPhone 11 Pro, I got the gold. On my iPhone 12 Pro, I got the, it's like almost like a navy blue. I don't remember Apple's term for it. And then on last year's iPhone 13 Pro, I got their blue again. This one was actually a really good color. I really like this one. Then I decided to go for purple. So I was a little skeptical at first, but you know what? Seeing it here in person, the purple is not bad. It almost like, if you look at it at an angle, it almost looks like dark gray or almost black. But uh, up here around the camera, I mean, there's definitely kind of a, a color difference there. You can see that it's a little bit darker or whatever, and as well as in the Apple logo itself. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You know, I, I really like this purple color. So here we go. Um, there is our USB-C to lightning, as well as in here we have all of our other stuff. Pretty sure we got our stickers. Oh, look at that. You no longer need a physical SIM card. Activate your eSIM during iPhone setup. Ooh. And then your Apple sticker as well. Other stuff in there. So cool. There's no charging brick in here. You only get the cable and the phone. And that is it. So here we go. Over here on uh, the sides, you can see we got ourselves the power button. We've got mute button, volume up and down. But there is no SIM tray. So say like over here on my iPhone 11 Pro, you can see we have a little SIM tray. None of that. There's nothing here on this phone. None. And then of course we still have lightning on the very bottom. Same speaker setup, it looks like nothing's changed there. But uh, the cameras are what's new this year. So this year we are going up to a 48 megapixel main camera. That's actually pretty cool and should uh, provide a lot better photos and whatnot. But here we go. Okay, let's go ahead and take off the screen protector. And there we go, looking at it at an angle there, you can see the new cutout for uh, the camera as well as the face ID, all that stuff, the new notch. So instead of having a notch like this, this is the 11 Pro, so a while ago, it now has a cutout as well. So, so let's turn it on and see how it looks in action. Oh, there we go. Hello. Swipe to open. English. You're in the US. Quick start. Ooh, here we go. Bring your current iPhone next to this. 
Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to set up my new iPhone. Okay, let's set up Face ID later. Ooh, look at this. Start using your iPhone in about 15 minutes. Download from iCloud. Let's see. I want to mirror it off of my old phone as quickly as possible. I don't want I don't want to transfer between the two. It says it's gonna take like an hour. I don't want to do any of that. Oh see, look, okay, there we go. We already got a signal, and we already got Wi-Fi. We got batteries already charged, a good amount too. So it automatically had this one start updating everything to iCloud. So that's really cool. So if you know you haven't updated it for a while or whatever, and mine, you know, updates every single night. So I just updated what I've done today and what I've added to it today. So there we go. The old iPhone is now updated, and so now it should restore from iCloud all this new stuff as well. So let's see. Time remaining. Estimating. Oh, there we go. See, that didn't even take, I don't know, not even five minutes or whatever. So that one was pretty quick. And now we got the progress bar going again. So, you know, remains to be seen. I mean, it looks like it's moving along just kind of slow, but moving, I guess. Well, look at that. That transferred over all of my settings. It brought over the new battery icon as well. So that's cool. Okay, so now it's trying to download all of my apps and stuff. Okay, that's interesting. I really hope my messages show up here. Oh, look at that. There we go. Downloading messages from iCloud. Okay, looks like they will. All right, that's good. But uh, here we go. Let's While it's doing all this, let's go ahead and take a look at the new dynamic island. Here we go. Oh, so I'm just having one on my watch. Pair watch with new iPhone. Wow. Uh, do you want to use this Apple Watch with Joel's iPhone? Yes. Oh, well, look at that. And then, wow, it's uh, freaking out on my wrist. It just really, it just kept buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and buzzing. And I'm like, dude, okay, I get it. But here we go. Let's look at that. Okay, look at that. That's interesting. Whoa, the phone's getting a little hot. Hmm, not sure why. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the cutout looks kind of nice. Let's see. We got anything going on yet? Whoa, that's kind of interesting. Wow, it's showing up all of my apps that I have open on my other phone as well. That is kind of crazy. It literally opened up the same apps. Now, those are all default apps. So it seems like, you know, any of the third-party apps that I have installed on my other phone, they, of course, don't show up there because I still need to install. So that's interesting. It literally is trying to pick up like exactly everywhere the old phone left off. So, okay, well, I'm gonna let all these apps and stuff, all this stuff download, and I'm gonna go use the phone for a little bit and then I'll be back and give my quick kind of first impressions of the phone. All right, it is now the next day and I've finally gotten some hands-on time with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. There was a couple things that stood out to me. First thing was uh, the size of the phone. Honestly, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, like I went back and I used my 13 Pro a little bit last night and uh, I was honestly kind of surprised. It honestly just made the, the other phones feel small. This new size, it's a little bit tougher to reach the corners of the screen sometimes. But uh, besides that, I mean, having the bigger screen is fantastic. I played a couple games on it as well as watch some YouTube videos and stuff on it. And uh, overall, it's fantastic. Next thing about the phone though, is uh, it has an always on display. Now I totally forgot about this. And so I was uh, hanging out with some friends last night and I just had my phone to my side. And uh, when I looked down at it, it was sitting here looking just like this. I mean, like, that's what it looks like, right? So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You know, my phone's on. And then I click the power button. Oh, no, it just made it get brighter. And I'm like, okay, click it again. Wait a minute, what's going on? And it was weird because it was showing me, you know, all my notifications and stuff were still up on the screen. And it was taking me a second before I was like, Oh, that's right. They have an always on display. I forgot about that. So yeah, no matter what you do, you know, you have your phone sitting here like on your desk with you, or if it's like, you know, sitting on a table with you, you know, you're out for dinner or something like that. It'll just chill here exactly like this. And uh, supposedly it doesn't have like almost any impact on the battery that remains to be seen. But uh, it's kind of interesting though. I don't know if I'll keep this feature on. I've also heard that if it, the phone is in your pocket, it'll know it's in your pocket and it'll turn the screen off because there's no need for it to be on if it's in your pocket. As well as apparently if you have an Apple Watch, if you end up leaving the room and leaving your phone in the room and uh, you get a certain distance away from it, the screen will actually shut off as well. So kind of interesting. The camera, I didn't really try it out. I mean, I opened it up and kind of messed around, took a couple pictures didn't seem all that different than the 13 Pro. I feel like most of the improvements are gonna be in say like low light scenarios, as well as with that new 48 megapixel camera. Now you technically can shoot at 48, you just have to shoot in a Pro Raw, but if you just shoot regular photos, it will downsample it to 12 megapixels and just give you a cleaner image overall. So I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how that all comes together, what the difference is really like, if it's worth it. 
Um, the other thing for me too has uh, been the battery. Now I haven't really used it a ton. I did charge it up a bit last night and while I was charging it, it was actually getting pretty hot. Now I feel like that's pretty common on the last couple of years phones. My iPhone 13 Pro gets extremely hot whenever I'm charging it or sometimes even when I'm doing, you know, like basic activities, I'll be playing a game outside in the sun, for example, and the phone will heat up a lot. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't have a case for it just yet. I had my phone plugged in. Uh, it was using a 20 watt fast charger. I had it plugged in sitting on my bed. And uh, I came back like 20 minutes later and uh, picked up the phone. The phone was noticeably hot. And then after I picked it up off the bed, I sat down on the bed and the bed itself underneath it was actually pretty warm as well. So I was like, wow, that is a lot of heat it's putting out. It kind of makes me a little worried about maybe some of the, the battery life on it. My iPhone 13 Pro now has 91% capacity from when it was brand new. So kind of unfortunate. It kind of sucks though, because this phone is, you know, a year old and it's already down to 91%. But to be fair, I have used this phone a lot. And by that, I mean a lot, a lot. A lot typically throughout the day I mean even like this past month I've uh, I've had to charge my phone two or three times a day just to get through the day so that's also part of the reason why I decided to step up to the Pro Max is for that little bit extra battery life as well so hopefully with the new improvements uh, with the new Apple Silicon in this phone also going up to the Pro Max as well as maybe some you know other optimizations Apple can do that uh, hopefully this phone will last me a little bit longer throughout the day but I am kind of curious though with the amount of heat it put off when I was charging it if that will degradate the battery to a substantial amount because I'm really hoping that it won't I'm really hoping that you know I can stay at 100% for as long as possible I mean like I said it's kind of unfortunate that this phone got to 91% uh, but I mean 9% in a single year I guess isn't terrible but uh, still I would prefer that to be maybe closer to five so I could potentially use these phones for more than a year because you know I have been upgrading every year but uh, it really would be nice if the battery would last longer. Now, part of that is probably also due to me fast charging all the time. I don't think I've ever really charged my phone with anything less than like 18 watts. I mean, I've used a five watt wireless charger on occasion, but that's not really to charge the phone. That's more like I just have it sitting on my desk. So I'll put it on the charger just to keep it topped off or charge it up a little bit. If I'm actually gonna charge my phone, I always plug it into the wall into my fast charger, or I will use my MagSafe battery on the back which I don't know that uh, I've had some issues with that recently. So maybe I'll go more into detail about that in a future video. But uh, I don't know. It's kind of curious though. It remains to be seen. But overall, I mean, phone's pretty good. The, uh, the dynamic island itself, I didn't notice it too much in just kind of regular day-to-day -day use. You guys can kind of see the dynamic island showing up a little bit there. So just kind of a quick example of the dynamic island, what it does. You can see it's basically the smallest it can be right now. But uh, if I start playing music here, it's um, using Spotify, which I actually thought was interesting that Spotify has already updated for it, which is kind of cool. But then you go out of it and then boom, look at that. It shows up at the top. It shows uh, the album on the left and then it just shows that there's something playing on the right. So kind of interesting. Uh, it does take away some of the other stuff you have at the top. So now it only shows me the clock on the left side as well as only shows me that I have Wi-Fi and my battery indicator over there on the right. And then I also have heard that you can set say like a timer and that, that will, yeah, it splits the dynamic island. So it'll show the timer on one side and over here I've got say Spotify. So kind of interesting though. So, I mean, that's how it works, I guess. That is the dynamic island. I'm curious to see as more apps actually take advantage of this, what happens with it. It looked really cool when Apple was showing it off on stage, but here in practice. But to me, it's basically just like another notch. It's not something I ever pay attention to. It basically, you know, feels and performs the exact same way as a notch. I mean, it basically is, it just is a notch, but it just has some additional pixels going up and around it. And it's a little bit smaller and stuff too. So overall, you know, Dynamic Island, it's a really cool feature when it works, but other than that, I don't really ever notice it. So it's like not something that I really can get into all that much. Like I said, it would be interesting to see once more apps actually start taking advantage of it and getting into it, what happens there. But uh, that's pretty much it. That is the new iPhone 14 Pro Max. That is my first unboxing and kind of overall quick first impressions of the phone. Uh, this video is kind of long, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys stuck around this long, make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button and also get subscribed if you're new around here. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.